Sally Field has written a new book, and in it, memories too painful to share. Tonight, behind one of America's most celebrated smiles, the abuse she suffered as a child. This evening, Diane and Sally Field and what she's now revealing. Step into Sally Field's fascinating world, where her rise from humble beginnings to Hollywood fame is truly remarkable. Oh, Benton, what you did for me. You changed my life, truly. With unforgettable performances in movies like Steel Magnolias and Forrest Gump, Field has earned praise for her exceptional talent and emotional depth on screen, winning numerous prestigious awards. But before becoming a star, Field had to overcome challenges in her upbringing and later faced obstacles in her relationships. Join us as we delve into the captivating story of Sally Field and uncover the truth behind her extraordinary life. Sally's Horrible Childhood Sally Margaret Field entered the world in 1946, her roots firmly planted in Pasadena, California. Her upbringing was shaped by her mother, Margaret Field, an actress, and her father, Richard Dryden Field, a salesman. However, the family's unity was disrupted when Sally was merely four years old, as her parents parted ways in 1950. This pivotal event reshaped the family dynamic, leaving her father distant and detached from her life. Shortly after, Margaret remarried to Jock Mahoney, a renowned stuntman and actor affectionately known as Jocko, thus introducing Sally to a new paternal figure in her life, initially endearing and devoted. Soon after, Jocko displayed a darker side when he developed a perverse interest in his teenage stepdaughter. Sally remembered how, when she was just 13 years old, he would ask her to walk across his body, often asking her to go further down. He also made provocative requests for her to dance. As the interactions pushed boundaries, Sally found herself increasingly confused, yet unable to vocalize her discomfort to others. Despite the fact that Jocko never coerced Sally into having his transgressions robbed her of security and sowed the seeds of shame and secrecy with no one to shield her from them. Sally's struggles with psychological trauma manifested in her academic performance, which suffered as a result. As Sally grappled with her traumatic experiences in isolation, she embarked on a journey to piece together her identity from the fragments of her childhood. Even though she found some relief in school plays, her home life kept getting worse, making things even harder for her. Sally's mom, Margaret, struggled with alcoholism as her marriage fell apart, leaving Sally without the support she needed. In response, Sally plunged headfirst into a world of passion and rebellion, seeking to break free from the constraints that bound her. Just before her breakthrough role on the TV sitcom Gidget, Field found herself pregnant by an anonymous man she met after graduating from high school. Her stepfather arranged for an abortion in Tijuana, and she made the trip with her mother, accompanied by their family physician. The procedure itself was distressing, with Field recalling waking up to the unsettling sensation of the anesthesiologist touching her Though the wounds of her past never truly faded, they unknowingly drew Field towards portraying complex, emotionally troubled women on screen. Through these roles, she sought a form of catharsis, mirroring her own journey of seeking understanding and healing. Early Career Field kickstarted her television career portraying the boy-crazy surfer girl in the sitcom Gidget from 1965 to 1966. Despite its initial lukewarm reception leading to its cancellation after just one season, the show found its footing during summer reruns, eventually becoming a surprising success. Eager to capitalize on Field's rising star, ABC launched The Flying Nun, casting her as Sister Bertrill for three seasons, spanning from 1967 to 1970. However, behind the scenes, Field's experience wasn't as enchanting as her on-screen personas. She revealed in an interview accompanying the season one DVD release that while she relished her time on Gidget, she loathed the flying nun due to what she perceived as a lack of respect from the show's directors. This led to Field being typecast, struggling to land roles that showcased her talent. In a bid to break free from her pigeonhole, Field took on a challenging role in the ABC television film Maybe I'll Come Home in the Spring in 1971. Here, she portrayed a disillusioned teen runaway who returns home with a bearded, drug-abusing hippie, played by David Carradine. Throughout the mid-1970s, Field made notable guest appearances on various television shows, including a stint on the Western series Alias Smith & Jones, where she reunited with her Gidget co-star Pete Duell. She also graced the thriller Night Gallery in the episode titled Whisper, showcasing her versatility amidst the ever-evolving landscape of television. In 1973, Field secured a leading role alongside John Davidson in the short-lived series The Girl with Something Extra, 
which aired from 1973 to 1974. Despite its brief run, the experience proved invaluable for Field's growth as an actress. Following the series' cancellation, Field embarked on a journey of self-discovery, enrolling at the prestigious Actors Studio under the tutelage of renowned acting teacher Lee Strasberg. Under Strasberg's guidance, Field found not only mentorship, but also a path to shed her television persona of the quintessential girl next door. Armed with newfound insights and artistic depth, Field soon found herself catapulted into the spotlight once again. Her breakthrough came with the title role in the 1976 television film Zibble, adapted from Flora Rada Schreiber's book. Portraying a young woman grappling with dissociative identity disorder, Field delivered a mesmerizing performance that garnered critical acclaim. Her portrayal earned her the prestigious Emmy Award for Outstanding Lead Actress in a Special Program Drama or Comedy in 1977, marking a pivotal moment in her career and breaking the shackles of typecasting from her sitcom days. Career Roles from Late 70s into the 80s in 1977, Field joined forces with Hollywood heavyweights Burt Reynolds, Jackie Gleason, and Jerry Reed in the blockbuster hit Smokey and the Bandit, which soared to become the year's second-highest-grossing film. This rollicking adventure solidified her status as a box office sensation. Two years later, Field showcased her dramatic chops in Norma Ray, where she portrayed the titular union organizer. Vincent Canby, in his review for the New York Times, hailed Field's performance as spectacular, adding to the film's critical acclaim. Field's stellar portrayal in Norma Ray earned her widespread recognition and accolades. She clinched the Best Female Performance Prize at the Cannes Film Festival and secured the coveted Academy Award for Best Actress, cementing her status as one of Hollywood's elite. The on-screen chemistry between Field and Reynolds continued to captivate audiences in subsequent collaborations, including The End, Hooper, and Smokey and the Bandit 2. In 1981, Field once again defied expectations by tackling diverse roles, such as a foul-mouthed prostitute alongside Tommy Lee Jones in the gritty Southern drama Back Roads. Field's versatility was further highlighted by her nominations for Golden Globe Awards for her performances in the 1981 drama Absence of Malice and the 1982 comedy Kiss Me Goodbye. Field's illustrious career reached another pinnacle with her second Academy Award win for her stirring performance in the 1984 drama Places in the Heart. Her acceptance speech, a blend of sincerity and humor, has become legendary in Hollywood lore. With heartfelt gratitude, she thanked director Robert Benton for changing her life and expressed her appreciation to the cast and her family for their unwavering support. Field's iconic line, You like me, you really like me, has since become a part of pop culture, though she later humorously referenced it in a Charles Schwab commercial. Following her Oscar triumph, Field continued to enchant audiences with her talent. In 1985, she shared the screen with James Garner in the charming romantic comedy Murphy's Romance. The following year, Field graced the cover of Playboy magazine's March 1986 issue, where she was featured as the interview subject. Although she didn't pose for a pictorial, her appearance in the iconic bunny ears outfit garnered attention. That same year, Field was honored with the Women in Film Crystal Award, celebrating her contributions to the industry. In 1989, Field delivered a poignant portrayal as the resilient matriarch Malin in the film adaptation of Steel Magnolias. Her performance earned her a nomination for the 1990 Golden Globe Award for Best Actress, further solidifying her status as a powerhouse performer capable of seamlessly navigating between dramatic and comedic roles. Iconic roles and recognition from 1990 till present. During the early 1990s, Field graced the silver screen with her presence in a series of supporting roles, showcasing her versatility and range. In Disney's live-action film Homeward Bound The Incredible Journey 1993, she lent her voice to the character of Sassy, adding depth to the beloved adventure tale. In the heartwarming comedy Mrs. Doubtfire 1993, Field portrayed the wife of Robin Williams's character and caught the eye of Pierce Brosnan's character as his love interest. Her performance added warmth and depth to the film's ensemble cast. Field also left a lasting impression as Tom Hanks's mother in the iconic Forrest Gump, 1994. Mama, what's vacation mean? Vacation? Despite being just 10 years older than Hanks himself. Interestingly, she had previously co-starred with Hanks six years earlier in Punchline, showcasing their on-screen chemistry once again. 
Throughout the 1990s, Field continued to captivate audiences with her compelling performances. She tackled controversial subject matter in Not Without My Daughter, a gripping thriller based on real-life events. Additionally, she brought her comedic talents to the forefront in Soap Dish, portraying a pampered soap opera star alongside a stellar ensemble cast. In 1996, Field reprised her role as Sassy in Homeward Bound 2, Lost in San Francisco, and received the prestigious Berlinale Camera Award at the 46th Berlin International Film Festival for her portrayal of a grieving vigilante mother in Eye for an Eye, directed by John Schlesinger. You washed it? Yeah. Matt, you ruined it! The smell is gone! There's nothing left! You can't get it! Field also made memorable guest appearances, including a role on the animated series King of the Hill in the episode Halloween, 1997, where she voiced the character Junie Harper. Additionally, she shared the screen with Natalie Portman in Where the Heart Is 2000 and starred alongside Reese Witherspoon in Legally Blonde 2, Red, White, and Blonde, leaving an indelible mark on each project with her talent and presence. Field's prowess extended beyond acting, as she delved into directing with the television film The Christmas Tree in 1996. Her directorial debut was followed by her work on the critically acclaimed TV miniseries From the Earth to the Moon in 1998, where she also portrayed Trudy, the wife of astronaut Gordon Cooper, in the episode The Original Wives Club. In 2000, she further showcased her directorial talent with the feature film Beautiful. In the early 2000s, Field made a significant impact on television with her recurring role as Dr. Abby Lockhart's mother, Maggie, on the medical drama ER. Her portrayal of a character grappling with bipolar disorder earned her an Emmy Award in 2001. Field's return to the role in 2003 and 2006 further solidified her reputation as a versatile and accomplished actress. Field's television journey continued with her involvement in the short-lived series The Court in 2002. However, it was her late addition to the ABC drama Brothers and Sisters in 2006 that garnered widespread acclaim. Taking on the role of matriarch Nora Walker, originally portrayed by Betty Buckley in the pilot, Field's performance earned her the 2007 Emmy Award for Outstanding Lead Actress in a Drama Series. The series, which also starred Callista Flockhart and Rachel Griffiths as Nora's adult daughters, captivated audiences with its compelling family dynamics. In addition to her television endeavors, Field made a mark in the realm of blockbuster films. Her portrayal of Aunt May in the Marvel Comics films The Amazing Spider-Man 2012 and its 2014 sequel showcased her versatility. However, it was her acclaimed performance as Mary Todd Lincoln in Steven Spielberg's Lincoln that garnered widespread praise. Field's portrayal earned her nominations for Best Supporting Actress at prestigious awards ceremonies, including the Oscars, Golden Globes, BAFTA, and Screen Actors Guild, further solidifying her status as a powerhouse talent in the industry. On May 5, 2014, Field was honored with a star on the prestigious Hollywood Walk of Fame, recognizing her remarkable contributions to the world of motion pictures. Her star, located in front of the Hollywood Wax Museum, stands as a symbol of her lasting impact in entertainment. In January 2015, Field's talents expanded beyond the silver screen as she was announced as a co-host for TCM, further solidifying her presence in the realm of film appreciation and discussion. The same year, she mesmerized audiences with her portrayal of the titular character in Hello, My Name is Doris, earning a nomination for the Critics' Choice Movie Award for Best Actress in a Comedy. In 2017, Field graced Broadway once again, reprising her role as Amanda Wingfield in The Glass Menagerie at the Belasco Theater. Her stellar performance earned her a Tony Award nomination for Best Actress in a Play, showcasing her enduring prowess on the stage. Additionally, Field's memoir, in Pieces was published by Grand Central Publishing in September 2018, offering readers a candid glimpse into her remarkable life and career. Returning to the small screen, Field starred in the Netflix miniseries Maniac in 2018, captivating audiences with her nuanced portrayal. Continuing her television streak, she headlined the AMC series Dispatches from Elsewhere in 2020, showcasing her versatility across different platforms. In 2023, Field received the esteemed Screen Actors Guild Life Achievement Award, recognizing her lasting impact and invaluable contributions to the entertainment industry. Personal Life Finding Love and Romantic Relationships In the late 1970s, Sally faced inner demons that threatened her hard-earned success. Beneath the applause, she battled deep loneliness rooted in childhood trauma. 
Determined to forge meaningful connections, she sought trust amid past wounds. Yet despite her resolve, failed relationships unveiled a pattern, prioritizing intensity over intimacy. Even at the height of fame, Sally struggled to find genuine romance. In 1968, Sally entered into her first marriage with her high school sweetheart, Stephen Craig. Their relationship provided Sally with a sense of stability and normalcy that had been absent from her turbulent upbringing. Immersed in the familiarity of their teenage love, Sally found solace and comfort. Together, they welcomed two sons, Peter and Eli, further solidifying their family unit. However, as time passed, Sally began to yearn for something more than the safety of her first love. Despite the stability they had built together, she found herself craving excitement and stimulation beyond the confines of their relationship. In 1975, Sally made the difficult decision to separate from Craig, and their divorce was finalized later that year. Perhaps the innocence and simplicity of youthful romance were ill-equipped to withstand the complexities of Sally's turbulent psyche. As Sally's star rose in the spotlight of fame, her love life became a lively spectacle for the press. From Hollywood heartthrobs like Davy Jones of the Monkees to her co-star Harrison Ford in Heroes, Sally's romantic flings were chronicled with fervor. The electric chemistry she shared with her leading men often spilled over into off-screen romances. Relationships with icons like Burt Reynolds and Kevin Kline ignited passion but failed to soothe Sally's restless heart. Instead, a whirlwind of casual affairs only served to mask her deeper yearning for meaningful connection. In 1984, she found solace in marriage with producer Alan Greisman, with whom she welcomed her third son, Samuel. Yet, after a decade together, the relationship fizzled out, culminating in a divorce in 1994. In the ensuing years, Sally focused her energy on parenthood, but her journey to find lasting partnership never fully reached its destination. Despite her successes on screen and in motherhood, Sally's search for enduring love remained elusive. Sally Field reveals her long-kept secret about Burt Reynolds. During Burt Reynolds' heyday as a Hollywood heartthrob, his off-screen love life rivaled the drama of his on-screen romances. However, his enduring crush on Sally Field stood out, captivating fans until the end. The duo, super famous in the 1970s, garnered widespread adoration. Yet their story ended in heartbreak, marked by pain, sadness, and intense drama. Sally Field and Burt Reynolds shared a relationship that captured the public's imagination throughout the 70s and 80s. Their on-screen chemistry in films like Smokey and the Bandit was palpable, and their off-screen romance only added to their allure. Beyond the silver screen, their personal connection drew significant interest from fans and media alike. Reynolds and Field first crossed paths while filming Smokey and the Bandit in 1977, where their magnetic chemistry was undeniable. They hit it off and spent nearly five years together. Initially, it seemed like the perfect match that everyone admired and wished for. However, their romance wasn't quite the fairy tale everyone imagined. Both Field and Reynolds had been previously married and divorced before they met. Sally and Stephen Craig were high school sweethearts who tied the knot and had two sons together. Their marriage lasted happily for seven years. On the other hand, Reynolds married Judy Carn, but their union lasted only a brief two years. Reynolds was deeply impressed by Sally's youthful energy and talent, pushing for her to be cast in Smokey and the Bandit, despite initial resistance from filmmakers who doubted her sex appeal. Reflecting on their chemistry, Reynolds emphasized their undeniable connection, describing the intense sexual tension on set. Sally, equally enamored by Burt's charm and charisma, felt an instant and powerful bond with him during their brief time together on set. Their romantic relationship garnered significant attention as they continued to collaborate on films like Hooper and The End solidifying their status as a beloved Hollywood duo. However, their partnership was not without its challenges, with the intense connection between them coming at a price. After nearly 40 years, she decided to finally open up about her past romance with Bert. Reflecting on the relationship, she described it as a complex mix of love and pain. Despite the deep affection they shared, there were undeniable complications. Recalling a particular instance, she remembered how he didn't want her to attend the 1977 Emmys, yet she ended up winning for her role in Sybil, a humorous oops moment, she admitted. Upon meeting Reynolds, she likened his demeanor to that of a bossy ghost, utilizing his fame to assert dominance over others. 
Unfortunately, she found herself included in his power play as well. In hindsight, she recognized their compatibility amidst imperfections, acknowledging how she unwittingly fell into a routine that began in childhood. Although their affection for each other was palpable, the demands of their careers and the harsh glare of public scrutiny took a heavy toll. Their love story unfolded with turbulent highs and lows, characterized by moments of deep love and affection, as well as periods of intense turmoil. Following their breakup, Field candidly reflected on their relationship, acknowledging its challenges and complexities. Despite the end of their romantic involvement, they maintained a friendship, with Field speaking warmly of Reynolds, expressing admiration and respect for his talent and charisma. In recent years, Field has been transparent about her perspective on relationships, finding contentment in her current life. She has shared her decision to prioritize personal growth over pursuing romantic entanglements, signaling a shift towards self-focus and independence. Her journey through various relationships, including her time with Reynolds, appears to have led her to a place of self-assurance. The passing of Burt Reynolds in 2018 deeply impacted Field, prompting her to publicly mourn his death. She revealed a long-held secret, an unspoken feeling of love she had harbored for him for over four decades. Field's confession following Reynolds's passing shed light on the depth of their connection and the lasting impact he had on her life. Through her experiences in the spotlight and her relationships, including her poignant connection with Reynolds, Sally Field has navigated the complexities of love and fame with grace and candor. Relationships with co-stars Throughout her illustrious career, Sally Field has formed numerous meaningful connections with her co-stars, leaving behind a trail of memorable chemistry on screen. In her recent candid reflections, Field offers insights into these complex relationships that blossomed on set. One such bond she cherishes is with Jane Fonda, whom she met when Fonda boldly knocked on her door in the 1980s, insisting on friendship. Over the span of 40 years, their bond evolved into a deeply personal connection, with Fonda assuming the role of an important female mentor for Field. During press events for their new film, 80 for Brady, Field affectionately teased Fonda about her knack for always getting the answers right during an on-camera game show. One, two, three, Super Bowl! <laughs> playfully accusing her of peeking at the questions beforehand. This lighthearted banter exemplifies the depth of their relationship, where teasing stems from a foundation of trust and mutual respect. Reflecting on her best on-screen kiss, Field fondly remembers her late co-star James Garner, with whom she shared effortless chemistry in Murphy's Romance. Field's admiration for Garner is palpable as she gushes about his ability to get it, encapsulating the profound connection they shared on screen. Sally Field vividly recalls the immersive experience of working with James Garner, where she felt truly cherished in their scenes together. Their on-screen chemistry was so palpable that she could close her eyes and transport herself back to those moments even years later. Garner's ability to make her feel genuinely valued left a lasting impression on Field, one that she still swoons over with fondness. In contrast, Field candidly acknowledges Tommy Lee Jones as her worst on-screen kisser, attributing it to a phase when he wasn't emotionally at his best. However, she emphasizes her understanding that actors, like anyone else, have ups and downs that can affect their performance. Field's willingness to empathize with Jones's situation is evident, reflecting her broader perspective on the person behind the co-star. Even when discussing her ex-partner Burt Reynolds, Field maintains a playful tone, describing him as a sloppy kisser with a hint of jest rather than spite. She suggests that Reynolds may have improved over time, acknowledging that on-screen intimacy was not his forte. Despite any past romantic entanglements, Field exudes respect for her colleagues, whether they're dear friends like Jane Fonda or awkward kissers like Tommy Lee Jones. Through her good-natured ribbing and genuine praise for her co-stars, Field reveals herself as someone who values the shared creativity of acting. Public debate on whether Sally Field undergone plastic surgery. As the acclaimed actress gracefully ages in the public eye, speculation abounds regarding the role of cosmetic procedures in maintaining her youthful appearance. While some argue that telltale signs of surgical enhancement are evident, others staunchly defend Field's natural beauty. Throughout the ongoing debate, Field remains steadfast in her pride for her aging appearance. She adamantly opposes excessive alteration, viewing it as a disservice to the woman she has become. Field prioritizes honing her acting skills over chasing eternal youth, finding inspiration in screen legends like Helen Hayes, who aged gracefully without resorting to surgery. 
Rather than succumbing to societal pressures, Field advocates for more positive portrayals of experienced women in film. She believes that actresses should be celebrated for their talents, rather than solely judged on their unlined faces. Field radiates confidence in her appearance, rejecting fleeting insecurities that may drive others to undergo cosmetic procedures, philanthropy, and activism. In 2005, Field faced a challenging diagnosis of osteoporosis, a condition that spurred her into action. Determined to raise awareness and empower others, she launched the Rally with Sally for Bone Health campaign, supported by Roche and GlaxoSmithKline. Controversially, the campaign also promoted Boniva, a bisphosphonate treatment for osteoporosis. Field's advocacy emphasized the importance of early diagnosis through technologies like bone density scans, aiming to combat the debilitating effects of the condition. Recognition for Field's lifetime of contributions to the arts and her activism came in 2005 when she received the prestigious Golden Plate Award from the American Academy of Achievement. This honor celebrated her dedication to both her craft and social causes, highlighting her influence beyond the silver screen. During her acceptance speech at the 2007 Emmy Awards, where she clinched the Outstanding Lead Actress in a Drama Series Award, Field seized the moment to deliver a powerful message. Her words, if the mothers ruled the world, there would be no goddamn wars in the first place, sparked controversy when Fox Broadcasting Company, airing the show, abruptly cut the sound and picture after the word, God. This censorship sparked debate, with Fox citing concerns over inappropriate language, yet Field's poignant statement echoed far beyond the confines of the award ceremony, sparking conversations about peace, power, and the role of women in shaping the world. Field's advocacy extends beyond the realm of entertainment, as she passionately champions various social causes. As a staunch supporter of women's rights, she has lent her voice to Vital Voices Global Partnership, serving on its board of directors and co-hosting the esteemed Global Leadership Awards on six occasions. Politically active, Field aligns herself with the Democratic Party, throwing her support behind Hillary Clinton's bid for the Democratic Party nomination in the 2008 presidential election. Field's advocacy also extends to LGBTQ plus rights, a cause close to her heart. Her unwavering support earned her the Human Rights Campaign's Ally for Equality Award in 2012. Notably, her youngest son, Samuel Greisman, is gay, further fueling her commitment to equality and inclusivity. In a bold display of activism, Field was arrested on December 13, 2019, while participating in Jane Fonda's weekly Friday climate change protests in Washington, D.C. Field's commitment to championing causes she believes in reflects her dedication to making a positive impact on the world. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.